Hello, mga pala si Coach Rev and yes guys, today may panibago na naman tayong i-interviewin at ang i-interviewin natin ngayon na isa sa mga co-founders ng Ready Player daw yung Guild or Network na kung saan tayo no, belong and uh, yeah, si Sir Rich Cabrera pero bago yan syempre guys, no, kagaya nung ginawa natin kay Sir Nix and Yeko nung naraan eh, ano muna, ang gusto coach muna tayo kung maga parang fast talk lang kung maga uh, papipiliin lang natin siya sa mga Uh, sa dalawang bagay no? So familiar ka guys sa fast talk Parang ganun lang siya Pero mayroong flavor ng Web3 So are you ready for the question Sir Rich? So are you ready? For Absolutely let's, let's do it Okay okay sure So first question You just have to pick between the two Number one is Adidas or Nike? I'll say Nike uh, yeah. Do you want me to explain Explain yeah. why or are we just running Okay sure it? sure If you, can, if you want to explain uh, No problem for that. Why Nike? Uh So yeah, I mean, I, I choose Nike just because when I was running track, um, the Nike shoes were always my favorite. Uh, they came out with the the Nike Nike Airs and the, the uh, waffle design, oh, the waffle which design. was like really important for when I was doing track to strengthen my foot. A lot of shoes are help give you comfort and and flex back, but the wa waffle design actually helped your foot. self strengthen and, and build muscles. I've always been a big Nike fan from that. Okay, okay. So Nike, uh, you prefer Nike uh, over Adidas. Now, second question is Web3 or Web2? Uh, Web3. Uh, I think we all know, <laughs> know obviously, why. <laughs> obviously, obviously. Now, three is, do you want cake or ice cream? Uh, I'm feeling like some ice cream right now. Okay, so uh, what flavor, what specific flavor of ice cream do you want? My... ice cream flavors are usually if I'm going for something really sweet I do mint chocolate chip which I think is controversial some people don't like it uh, <laughs> and then if not that I like sorbets like the like anything that was fruit flavor okay is it sorbetes did you say sorbetes Sor sorbet oh like, sorbet uh, I thought, yeah, I thought yeah. it's sorbetes so yeah now YouTube or Twitch Are you a YouTube? Uh, I'll say YouTube. YouTube just has way more variety. You can do shorts, you can do VODs, you can do streams, etc. Um, I think Twitch is fun, but it's really a lot harder to build an audience um, there. Yeah, true. But like, there are limitations. Now, Twitter or Discord? Uh, this one's tough, just because like, Discord gets so cluttered so quickly and all the messages and the pings, it's, it's really... not uh not that great of an experience so i think i would say twitter twitter for now how about long term or short term definitely long term long term how about elon musk or mark zuckerberg definitely elon musk there it's a hard choice but uh i'm not a fan of old zuck <laughs> okay now how about elon musk or bill gates i'll say I'll say bill gates uh just because Well, I've been a fan of what he's been doing with the Gates Foundation and trying to get back. So Bill Gates. Now, uh, Ethereum or Bitcoin? Ethereum, easy, any day. <laughs> Ethereum all day, okay. And the last question for our Angusta coach is, love life or career? Um, that's a tough one. I would say, <laughs> yeah. I would say love life because you can have a career, but if you don't have, you know, someone to share experiences with it's yeah. kind of empty yeah it's kind of meaningless so yeah so those are the questions for our Angusta coach now let's let's go right into the more serious and more uh, deeper questions regarding Ready Player DAO so yeah uh, can you tell us more Sir Rich about uh, what DAO is for those viewers out there who are kind of curious what it is and uh, how did you come up of you know building RPD And where did the name like Ready Player DAO uh, originate? So yeah, I mean, brief background regarding that. Yeah, so DAO is a decentralized autonomous organization, which just means that uh, everybody has a vote or say in, in how it's ran. Um, so essentially, uh, it's all on chain through a centralized app. Um, and all the votes are weighted by how much of uh, a token share that you have. Uh, for Ready Player DAO, and this is done differently between many DAOs, but ours, 
are non-tradable tokens that uh, they are the equivalent value of like how much share in the DAO that you hold, um, and then that dictates how much voting power you get on a lot of the larger strategic decisions that are being made in the DAO. Um, and then you know no one can have more than ten percent just to make sure that there's no like whale, uh, yeah, pushing all the decisions, mm-hmm. etc. So in terms of yeah, yeah. Yeah, in terms of how we got started and how we got, came up with it, um, Ready Player, I think, you know, all the talk around the metaverse and how things are changing and how um, blockchain and, and like digital ownership can expand and grow to be something larger than just what's in your favorite game. Um, you know, Ready Player One, uh, the book, and then also the, the, the amazing the movie. movie that was put out. Yeah, I was yeah. actually like. When yeah, I heard Ready Player One, is, is it like connected to your RP? I mean, is, is it like inspired in the movie? And then, is, yeah. is, is it is it inspired in that? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, the Oasis. Uh, I, I think when I started, I think it still is, but the, like my location on Twitter is the Oasis. Okay, okay. Uh, but yeah, that's that's definitely our inspiration for the name. So your inspiration is the Ready Player One movie, like the one with you know all all like games and famous. A part in character is like merge and exactly the, uh, like yeah. I think if we do this right that's that's what the metaverse should look like right so so what was your inspiration behind RPD like why did you create uh, I mean you, of course you're one of the founders so what is the concept behind like what is your main goal as as the founder of ready player Down? yeah so um, you know when I started ready player Dow I think I was um, just kind to kind of dabbling in you know, Web3 and Ethereum and stuff that was happening on chain on the side uh, with my work. But when I started to see a lot of what Web3 gaming had going on and, and the potential that it had, I realized that it was a very like, niche and, and difficult market to get into for people that wanted to be a part of it and help it grow and watch it, you know, find ways to help and expand um, and I had you know some of the access and availability to be able to, to do that for people that wanted to be a part of it um, so we start I started ready player DAO on the thesis of you know this is going to be a gaming DAO helping elevate the web3 gaming space um, at first we you know we started with scholarships trying to help um, people from all over the world uh, get into these Web3 games and, and start playing them. And, and we figured that was a great great way to um, help expand the reach and the knowledge of what's happening in Web3 gaming to all those people. Um, then we kind of took a step back and realized that uh, a lot of the scholarships are, and like play to earn is not, um, it's not sustainable. It's or Not sustainable and it's not really healthy. And, and it actually ended up, you know, causing just as much harm as it did help uh, even to the scholars, to, the, to investors, and to the games themselves. Um, so we decided, you know, we're going to pivot a little bit. We still do have some scholars. We do, you know, still give out some assets, um, but we aren't, like, making any money off of it. it that's not the, the goal of the point. The goal of the point is to, to try to get people into these games and see what's going on and why, how's it different, how it can help. Um, our main goal and focus now is content marketing through content creators um, and helping these games um, with their go-to-market strategy and user acquisition, also advising them on how to build sustainable economies and not play to earn, um, you know, extractive economies. Uh, so working with them through the tokenomics and the gameplay loops. Um, so we really like to be right there in the gist of like marketing and then and then development strategy um, is, is where we're happy to sit. And we've, we've got a lot of great uh, people from the uh, two space that have a lot of experience there uh, in Ready Player DAO that help us push that forward. Now, is Ready Player DAO like a, can you say that it is a network right now or is it still like a guild or? It's definitely more of a network. I, I, I wouldn't use guild to, to ex- ex- exp- explain it. So it's definitely it's definitely more of a network uh, yeah. situation. So yeah. Now, for those who don't know, just uh, just wanna know, Azra, uh, how old are you, Sir Rich? Like having that kind of vision and like this 
uh, you know, this network uh, topic, like, how old are you? Like, in your mid thirties, twenties, or uh, I'm I'm 28. When I started it, I was 26. Okay, so you started Ready Player Dao 2021, probably like 2021, and yep. then your this is your. I mean, you're going two years this year. Yeah. Okay, 2023. Now, my next question is like you mentioned the that you are now focused on, uh, like Web3 marketing now. What are the benefits of being part of Ready Player Now? And uh, like, do you have certain roles inside the network? Like, do you have, like you've mentioned, you, you have like scholarships, you still have scholarships. But what are the mo main focus of the people inside Ready Player Now? And, you know, what are the things that they can get once they get inside the network? Yeah, I mean, the main focus for people in our community is to give them. Um, access to a lot of different games so if you're a content creator we've we have a hundred content creators now officially um that we've gotten access to game a, a new game two new games every week since the beginning of january or mid-january um so that creator network is also booked out for the next month so you know if you're a content creator and you're trying to find out where to make content and what kind of content to make everything is laid out there for you and all you have to do is get into the game and create your content put it out there and the big thing with content is consistency i'm, I'm sure you know uh, you want to be consistent you want to be attention grabbing etc uh, we can't help in terms of you know telling you how to create your content at least not yet um hint hint but um, we we can help you uh, work towards that consistency. Um, so we're going to be able to provide you access to those games, we're we'll able to provide you uh, topics to talk about for those games, and then exciting events that are happening with those games that are coming up. Um, and that's kind of the outline of you know what a lot of content creators need, right? And then we're also going to pay you uh, for making that content. Now, which is the biggest part. Yeah, right? yeah, like that's the Creator Bounty program, right? Yep. And now, wh whose idea is that? Like, whose uh, idea is the Creator Bounty program? Yeah, I mean, I, I was it, it was it was it was mine. I was kind of looking at the space, and you know, you see Bryce and Spike and Yellow Panther and Stash and all these other people that are creating content, um, and they've grown to be pretty big. But you also see some of the smaller content creators who might not have as large of a following, whether on Twitter, TikTok, YouTube, Twitch, etc. Um, that are also making just as good content and sometimes even better, but just no one knows about them. Um, and, and because of that, games aren't coming to them to pay them or to give them opportunities to create that content. So what I wanted to do is to give everybody an equal footing. So it's like, everybody's gonna get paid the same for these bounties. Everybody has the equal chance and it's gonna be voted on by the quality of, of the content that's being made, right? And we are going to act as like your agent. Like we're going to go get that bounty for you. We're going to do all the details. We're going to get all the information about the events that are coming up, all the information about the game. We're going to make sure you have access to it. We're going to make sure you get paid. So basically you have a free agent through Ready Player DAO to manage uh, a source for all of your content. And then if you want to, as a content creator, go and continue working with that game all the information's there. You can sign up to their Discord, you can go find their creator program, and you can do everything you need to do with there. And, you know, we've already had a lot of feedback from games, like, wow, we loved the um, way everything was set up. It's made it so much easier for us. We don't have to, like, fish through and find good content creators, the ones that are actually legit and not trying to scam us and do all that other stuff. And same with the content creators looking at game projects, right? Like okay is this project legit is it good like who's done dd on it well ready player dao has right um so we're we're making sure everything uh is set up to protect and to make sure content creators get paid and help the games kind of set uh get pushed out all, all across socials um and then you we know that the way the algorithm works is the more people that are talking about them the more people will see information about them um, so we actually, do the Creator Network, had created um, on OpenSea, one of the, one of the, the projects was trending after our, our Creator Network went off, right? And on Twitter, another, uh, at a different time, 
another project was trending because how many people were posting TikToks and and videos about them across the space. Yeah, it was it was like um, quite amazing because like you were I believe that Ready Player Dow is the first like guild or network to do this project, and uh, yeah. I, I believe that there will be of course a lot of those guilds or networks, future networks who are who is going to follow Ready Player Dow's footsteps, and yeah, now. Do you think this uh, this kind of uh, uh, program? I I mean, what is the like duration of it? Like, do you have uh, uh, will it last for a year, or will it last for for the next ten years, or is it going to be a permanent thing in the Web three space? Uh, how do you see the potential of this kind of marketing for Web three uh, projects? No, I think it's got, it's definitely permanent, and we're already working out. You know, it's only been a month, and we're already working out of ways to provide even more value to the creators and build on top of this program. Um, and you know, there's there's plenty of, of Web three games, but there's also a ton of Web two games, and potentially we can also bring those in and provide bounties to create content around those. Um, and then beyond that, it's it's not enough to just give content creators. Um, you know, a, a source of content and that consistent value add of terms of, you know, information to talk about and, and save you the time of doing due diligence and finding good games and doing all that stuff. Because you still need to know how content world works and being able to lean into the creator network. It's why we called it the creator network and not just like the bounty program, right? Because it's not just the bounty program. Yeah, true, true. Um, we're going to have something that's going to be announcing uh, ideally within the next month. That's And this is the first time I've talked about it, so... Uh, <laughs> that's leaked. Um, yeah, can you tell us more about that? Here's the leaks. Okay. Uh, chica, chica, chica. <laughs> chica, chica, uh, <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> sure, sure. Can you um, provide us some hints? But we're, 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 we want to help creators understand how algorithms work, um, how, you know, thumbnails should be set up, how, how titles should be set up, um, how to draw users in, what peop how people are looking at things. So we're working with um, some very experienced Web2 content creators that have been doing this for a long, long time to provide that value back uh, to the creators in our creator network. Mm -hmm. um, so while anybody can stand up a creator bounty, um, you know, not everybody has you know the industry knowledge uh, that Ready Player Dow has. And the good thing about Ready Player Dow is, uh, actually, Sir Han Tao. If you're familiar with Han Tao, like yeah. the Quest co-founder, he was actually like uh, looking for looking. I mean, he's actually searching for Ready Player Dow's bounty program, and and he somehow wanted it to. Uh, to be implemented in Axe Infinity, and then this just means that uh, I think uh, Re Ready Player Dow is really doing a good job in terms of you know uh, providing quality contents and you know providing creators some rewards that uh, you know they they actually wanted. Now the question is, uh, what are the big company Web three companies that you partnered with, and yeah, how many how many Web three uh, projects, networks, games have you partnered up to this date? Yeah, I mean, we've, we've done a lot, but in terms of setting the groundwork for these bounties, we went all the way to the top. We went to the chains. We talked to Polygon, we talked to Avalanche, we talked to IMAX, Arbitrum, Near, etc., Solana, all of them, and said, you have a lot of games. Uh, a lot of these games are, are going to get ready to go to market this year um, we know that it's in your best interest to make them be successful we want to help you support that we have an entire marketing team and aggregation service as well as a network of creators to help do that um, so we we're working directly with the chains themselves um, to set these things up which will also be you know a larger part of things but we partnered um, with with uh, officially with Avalanche and Near so far, unofficially we've we've chatted with Arbitrum, IMX, Polygon, um, and we're looking to push those forward. And they are introducing us to a lot of the different games on their chains that they're excited about, and they know that they have 
upcoming milestones um, that can that content can be made around. Um, so we're, it's a very top-down approach from from us. And now the question is, like you you know like there are like uh, like a lot of games out there who are just scam games. Like, what are the things that Ready Player Now considers so that uh, when you partner with such a game? you know that this game is going for the long term and not just going for a pump and dump scheme because what i've noticed is uh the games are really good and all the games that i've tried so far with the creator bounty they're really good and i see the the potential for them but how do you see i mean what are your like criteria for you know accepting uh those uh games to be part of the rpd bounty program yeah one of the things that we we say is we will never uh, put a bounty to promote a coin or an NFT or, or any kind of financial item, right? We are only making video game content. So that's one of the things that, that you know, it's a terrorist for people that want to be like, hey, we have this awesome mint coming up or we have this awesome token that's going to get you like token drops is like never will that be a part of the bounty program. Um, because of exactly what you said like we're not the goal is not to sell anything uh one that's that's like just super risky uh <laughs> it, it can put a bad name on content creators themselves um right and you can catch a lot of flack even legally um and then two it's like where this is what they're gaming this isn't this isn't DeFi. uh we're, we don't care about you know the nft drop or the token we care about what's the game is it going to be exciting and if it is, the players themselves can decide whether or not to, to go get an NFT or token. Okay. So, so, um, so probably like the focus of the creator program's contents is like more on the gameplay side and not just not on the tokens, not on the potential pump schemes, right? Exactly. So yeah, so the, uh, cool. Now, uh, where do you see like RPD in the next 10 years? I mean... Yeah, I think... I think you know, ten years is, is a long time, but I think the idea is to expand uh, both the creator network in terms of helping new creators get started and and find their journey, but also adding more and more talent to the top level. So right now we have Mystic Seven and Ali Straza. Um, we want to add uh, more content creators to the top level for different types of games. So like, it would be good to have an FPS Web three content creator. It would be good to have. You know, a MOBA content creator, um, et cetera, et cetera, um, and kind of build out more to like uh, an esports community, but with Web three built in. Um, and what what that means, what what Web three community it means is that um, it's not just about uh, the influencer and and the the brand in the high level. It's also about the followers and the people that want to be a part of it and support it and all this other stuff. So instead of all the money flowing up, you know, it's it's kind of more middle out in terms of like we're going to support the community and the fans, and we're also going to support our creators, right? Uh, and I think that's the major difference in Web three. Like Web three is community. Uh, if you don't want community, you know, just stay in Web two, rebuild hundred thieves. It'll be very difficult. Now, uh, do you plan on like making a website, like a designated website, especially like in, for example, five years time? Of course, there will be like projects that will, you know, come to RPD, and you know, there will uh, there will be a ton of creators out there. Like, do you plan on like creating a YouTube type Web three website for content creators so that it'll be more, you know, sophisticated or more, more advanced, or you know, do you have plans of building one in the future? Uh, I'm currently not. We're we're working with a lot of people that are building those things. Um, so like Lens Protocol is, is building a lot of that. Um, they have a few tools already that's that that are up that are very much like uh, Web three open um, and enabled on that side. So we're we're talking to them and ideally we'll have a partnership out with them to help provide that kind of stuff. Um, one of the things that we want to avoid is is scope creep. So sometimes you have a lot of good ideas, but the hardest decision is to figure out which ones to pursue and which ones to work with other people uh, that are pursuing them instead of uh, 
going in, in 10 different directions. Now, what are your next programs? I mean, uh, upcoming programs, and uh, yeah, you have some leaks for this. I mean, aside from the creator program, of course, aside from the games that will be coming, uh, do you have any other planned programs for this year that are unannounced yet? <laughs> okay, well, can you provide some hints regarding that? Yeah, I think I, I think I gave you the biggest hint and the biggest one that we're focusing on right now. Um, but we also might be doing some partnership with creators on in-person events um, coming up that's that's being hashed out. And then, of course, uh, like I mentioned, there's going to be other marketing um, that we'll be doing that is more than just creator network, more than just Mystic and Alley. It's, it's actually, we have connections with uh, you know, TikTok, TikTok, YouTube, Facebook gaming uh, entities, as well as um, a lot of different publishers and marketing tools that are going to help games go to market uh, on, a, on a grander scale than just one-on-one -on -one with creators. Um, so the goal is, is for Ready Player Now to be a one-stop shop for everything games need uh, for go-to-market and user acquisition. Now you've mentioned like, are there going to be like meetups uh, for the community of Ready Player Now? Do you, do you plan on doing so? Yeah, um, we're gonna be set up at, uh, at GDC in a month, which is the biggest gaming conference, um, I would say probably in the world, if not at least top five in the world. Mm -hmm. um, and then I will also be working with uh, a very large uh, entity in the gaming space from the Web2 gaming space at Gamescom in Germany, which is another top five gaming conference um, later this year uh, in August, which will be exciting as well. Um, so we'll have some stuff built out around those. Okay, now, uh, any like message to those people who doubt Web3 and who just say that uh, it's just the same, you know, and you, you know, uh, who are just haters of Web3 and, you know, who just prefers Web2. I mean, what can you say about those people and uh, what are the things that Web3 has that Web2 doesn't have in, in your perspective? I'll just say I'll, I'll see you in three or four years. Because <laughs> sure at that bad. point, at that point, I think a lot of Web two games will have Web three components. I think you can look around you and, and name your your favorite brand uh, or item that you talked right now, and I can name you. If not they, probably one of their competitors have or are working on Web three integration. We talked about Nike earlier. Artifact. You know, you can talk. What do you What do you drink every day? Coffee. Starbucks. You know, what do you use when you're bored, browse the web, Reddit? That's Web3. It's going to be even more Web3 coming soon, too. That's another leak. <laughs> so, like I said, you can you can hate it all you want, but uh, it's here. And it's not going anywhere. So it's only coming even more. So see you in three to four years. <laughs> yeah, this, this see you in three to four years. Now, a uh, message to those who believe in Web3. Uh, for those that believe in it, I think uh, you guys... You guys are, are very much visionaries uh, and, and have done a great job finding um, something that's super exciting and super new. And uh, you should find a way to be a part of it. Um, you know, you can, a lot of the games um, are hiring, um, you know, a lot of demand for Solidity devs, a lot of demand for community managers, a lot of demand for, for marketing managers, directors, etc. You don't have to be a developer or have expertise in gaming. Um, but you know, there's a lot of teams out there that are building great things that are growing very rapidly. Um, so if you're just coming into the space or have been in the space in a while for a while, um, it, I think it'd be great to find a way to, to contribute to it as well. But you know, I mean, if if it's if you enjoy what you're currently doing, you don't have to as well. But you know, um, there's different ways to support what's going on. I, I'm always talking to my friends about Web3 gaming. They are probably <laughs> bored of me now. <laughs> are they like into Web three? Like your friends? Are you, are they into Web three? Or are you? They are still in the process of, you know, absorbing the the, the thought of Web three. Uh, it depends on which friend. Some of them, <laughs> I'm sure, just see me as the crazy guy wailing his arms about gaming. <laughs> uh, and then some of them, some of them hear me and 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 see what I see. Uh, but uh, you know, time will tell. I'll see them. I'll see them in three to four years too. 
Now, uh, this is kind of uh, like a personal uh, mm. question, but not actually a personal question. But as a 28 year old, yeah, like you're you're very young, and you know you have a lot of vision right now. Like, what are you, what is your message for those guys out there who who want to be like you, who want to you know who want to express their vision, but are they're, but are afraid of doing so? Like, what is your somehow mm. inspirational uh, message to them? You know, like parts of motivation to somehow boost them up. Yeah, I, I, I will say, you know, because it was a big risk for me to leave my last job to, to start Ready Player Now. My last job was an amazing job and I loved it. A lot of people mm -hmm. talk about how, oh, I hated my other job. I'm so glad I left. I loved my job. I had an amazing boss, uh, amazing can, company can you, that I was working. Uh, lever, uh, can you tell what your job is, if it's okay? Yeah, I was a special solutions architect at oh, Red Hat. Oh, okay. I, I was uh, I was helping advise US government agencies on modernizing technology stack, working with uh, like NASA, FBI, oh, uh, Department of Energy, Department of Justice. Oh, cool! Uh, I'm helping them move uh, a lot of their tech stock tech stack to the cloud. Um, and uh, one of the cool things is I worked I trained a lot of NASA engineers on on Kubernetes. Uh, which is now on the International Space Station. Um, so it was very fulfilling, obviously. Yeah, it was true. very challenging. It was, it was a really awesome place to work. But when life opens doors for you um, in a way that makes it very easy for you to step into the next room uh, and start the next journey, uh, I would say take it, right? Uh, there's a reason. There's a reason things work out the way they do and it's better to swim downstream with them than to fight it and try to swim upstream so that's what i did i had the opportunity you know a lot of people reached out to me around getting into web3 gaming space and referred started referring to me as a, a go-to person and then i started asking me like how do we how do we do something larger with this and at that point it's like some people were tugging me in this direction that you just can't fight anymore I was like, all right, well, let's do it, you know? Um, and when things like that happen in life, you just got to say, all right, let's do it. Uh, do you believe that opportunity knocks on you once, never twice? Do you believe in that? Like, oh, good. Absolutely. If I didn't jump in and start Ready Player Dow when I did and how I did, I don't think uh, I would have ever uh, been in the Web3 gaming space as large as I am now. Yeah, so if opportunity knocks on you, like grab it already, like, especially exactly. if like, you, you, you want, you love what to do. Now for the final question, actually final, final message for the RPD community, for those who wanted to, you know, wants to join the Greater Bounty Creator Program or Greater Bounty Program, uh, you, you can, uh, you know, invite them and, you know, I'll be putting the link of the Discord uh, down below. So, yeah. Yeah, you can see all the information about it at readyplayerdao.io, it's our website. Um, and then we have all the information about the Creator Network, forms to fill out, and links to the Discord there. Um, if you want to just go straight to Discord, it's discord.gg slash readyplayerdao. Um, excited to see you in there, and, and I'm excited to, to show you guys what we have uh, in store for this year. Cool. Uh, thank you so much, Sir Rich. Uh, this was one of the most, uh, actually the most inspirational interview that I've done. Uh, I was actually like, uh, you know, curious about your age because we're, I'm like 21, uh, turning 22. And I was like thinking, what am I six, five years from now? And I, I, I kind of look up to you because of how big RPD has been in this Web3 community. And, you know, Web3 is just too early right now. And being one of the kickstarters of, you know, the creator program for Web3, uh, it, it's it's good to be, like, I'm a part of it. And, yeah, I appreciate you, uh, Sir Pat, and, of course, Sir Carl, and, for, of course, uh, inviting me to join RPD. And, uh, yeah, looking forward to be with you in the coming years as well. So, again, thank you so yeah. much for your time. Yes, do you have something to say? No, I just want to say you've been a tremendous value add to Ready Player Dow. I'm, I've been very, very happy with having you in the community and, and seeing all the work that you've been doing in terms of committing to your content and all that stuff. And then, you know, just where advice for you as a 21 year old that I would give myself is never be afraid to, um, you know, uh, I guess in terms of, of making the jump and, and sticking to your goals, never be afraid to to cut some things or make sacrifices to get to get what you want, 
right? Um, and that's the biggest thing. Even before Web3, uh, you know, with my job and everything, um, if there is something you want that you're striving to, it's never too early, never doubt yourself, and, and always be willing to make a sacrifice to, to get to the angle. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'll, I'll take that into account. So yeah, I uh, appreciate your time, Sir Rich. I believe that it's kind of late there in your area. Uh, again, thank you, thank you for your time. Hopefully, I can invite you again. If you know we have other big news inside RPD, uh, I'll be willing to invite you again. And uh, hopefully, that you'll, you'll accept that again for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks and, for having me. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Sir Rich. And actually, my next person that I'll be interviewing is actually Sir Pat. So we'll be talking about the games. Awesome. Uh, the games that uh, that are currently being played uh, for the Peter program and you know that you've granted access to in RPD. So yeah. Uh yeah again thank you so much so guys ayun uh si Sir Rich Cabrera the co-founder of Ready Player Dao. Kita niyo naman napaka bata pa niya like at 28 years old. So brang visionary napakadaming uh dami nating natutunan. Dami nat I mean sana na motivate kayo guys kasi ako personally na motivate ako kasi talagang an an ano na ang diverse na ng mundong ginagalawan niya, especially sa siya sa mga uh, nag-kickstart, di ba, ng greater like, bounty program sa Web3. So, yun lang. Uh, again, Sir Rich, thank you so much for your time. Uh, hanggang sa muli ako si Coach Rev. Like, comment, subscribe. Buya. <laughs>